Hello, um, this is the tutorial I'd like to talk about uh, upscale, uh, 360 panorama image, uh, as well as uh, prompt travel uh, in stable diffusion. Um, so first one, I'd like to explain a little bit what is um, panorama image. Uh, so in our stable diffusion, uh, you do have text to image, and here, uh, if you go to LoRa, uh, you are able to load a special 360 um, panorama LoRa. Uh, this will allow you to actually generate the image like a panorama fashion. Uh, you can also load in this LoRa from image to image. So its LoRa is here as well. Uh, probably and you can refresh, uh, then you'll see that is the 360 LoRa, okay? So give you a quick uh, example. What this means is, uh, for example, if you want to load, uh, I'm actually using some example file I have. Um, so give me a second. I will loading um, some images here. So you can see my text prompt. Um, I'm gonna just using this simple one I uh, did earlier. So this is the image, actually I can uh, share with you right here. Right. So that's the image, if I double click, um, it does look like a panorama. Right. <clears throat> so the left and right side, they will match. Uh, also this represent this kind of immersive environment. Uh, later you can drag it into 360 viewer. You can see this as a panorama fashion. So here's the text prompt. Uh, you see here, if I use LoRa, you can actually ignore this part uh, about the steps. Okay, uh, so this part is uh, negative um, prompt uh, here. <coughs> the uh, text prompt is basically uh, mentioned the LoRa name, uh, also is a big cathedral-like space, right? If you run that, you can generate a LoRa C60. Um, typically, the uh, dimension would be uh, two by one. <coughs> so you can start with this fashion, right, 1600 by 800. Um, I don't really do uh, high resolution upscale. Uh, I will explain later why. Um, yeah, so that's basically the setting here, um, very basic. And then I will go ahead, generate. Right, because I'm using 360 LoRa, at the beginning it will take a little bit longer time to load this engine in. Um, then you can basically see the image. You can also play with the settings like denoising. Um, oh, right now I'm using the upscale probably, oh, sorry, I didn't uh, check the mark, so that's good. You don't want to check. Because, um, let me talk quickly about upscale. Um, the upscale is a technique you can double, triple, quadruple the resolution, right, of your image. Um, it's very useful, especially if you do panorama, um, usually the resolution is really high. Um, I would recommend at least uh, 6400, right? So by 3200, uh, so you can basically multiply it two twice uh, for this basic image. So here you can see it looks okay, it's a lower resolution. If I save the image, <coughs> okay, save into this location. And then if I go ahead, um, open this new generated image, I can go to this website called Render Stuff 360 Viewer, then I can drag it in. <clears throat> right, you can see that image. Oh, hope, oops, uh, I think I didn't drag into the right location, right here. Drag one more time. So you have this 360, right? It looks pretty good, but it's low resolution. Plus, you can see there is a gap. Right. This is called the left and the right edge on uh, the seam. This can be easily fixed uh, by a couple of ways. Uh, number one, you can go to Photoshop. Uh, I can show you here really quick. In Photoshop, uh, if you make a selection of an edge, 
then you can go to edit you can do uh, count um, the uh, aware uh, content aware field um, so that usually give you this pretty good uh, result so basically it's just take a advantage of the neighbor images and automatically figure out what is the content here uh, so feel free to try that uh, this is in edit uh, content aware field right so that's the option another way um, you can fix this gap is you can download the image which I already did then uh, I will show you really quick yeah, this is just some Photoshop stuff, right? So this is in Photoshop. Um, so here in the filter, right? If you go to other offset, I can offset, let's say, 500 pixels. Um, and you can definitely see the edge, right? So basically this is the shifting the edge from, you know, zero to 500. And um, where is the edge? It's right here, if you pay attention. This is the edge. Not very bad, but you can definitely save this image again, right? Uh, and then you can send in this image back to um, Stable Diffusion. Uh, in Stable Diffusion, you can do uh, image to image, right? You can keep exactly the same resolution, 1600, and then you make this uh, as a very low, uh, let me do it. I think this will be easier if you see it. So if I drag it to here, the image, right? Oh, uh, but I first want to make sure I save this image. I save this as a two, okay. Right. So this is the new image. The only difference from the previous one is I shifted pixels 500. Uh, so here in stable diffusion. I'm going to load in this new one here, right? So you can see that uh, the edge is right here. Uh, and then I will just simply do just resize. Um, I want to keep this as exactly the same. Right. Um, prompt, I can just simply use the highly detailed, high resolution, photorealistic. Um, I don't want to have anything blur. And then I want to make the uh, denoising really low. So it's basically kind of matching the original one. Uh, CFG as 11, um, step as 25. Uh, so basically it's just regenerating this image. Uh, but because AI is reconsider all the pixels, uh, this edge will be removed. Uh, so let's try that, generate. And then I will download and you can compare the difference. Uh, so this is using uh, you know, offset in Photoshop. Then bring into image to image uh, to fix the edge. Um, usually it works much better uh, than the you know, uh, fill function in Photoshop. But let me save it. Okay. So I will call this as uh, maybe three. Okay. So we got a bunch of them now. Uh, back to 360 viewer, right? If you recall, this is the edge, right? We can see that very clearly from the ground, right? From between these two columns. But now, if I look at this new version, drag it in. If I look at the gap between these two columns, it's being blurred a lot, right? So this is one way you can, you know, uh, kind of improve the gap in between. Uh, but of course, you can always bring that into Photoshop. Then you can, you know, blur the edges by using fill. Okay, so that's I will leave that to you. You guys can definitely play with it. Uh, the next thing I like to talk quickly is, you know, if you have this low resolution uh, image, how I'm able to actually uh, upscale to a higher resolution. So there are a bunch of ways. Uh, so one way you can do is back to X2 image. You could generate a higher resolution directly here. You can also check the higher res fix. And here you can actually do upscale here. Um, however, I think the um, downside is this will take a longer time to generate. 
Uh, so in the workflow, I would rather get a low resolution first, then do the upscale. Uh, I don't want to do the upscale directly here. So that's something you want to be aware. Another way you can do image to image uh, is just go, you know, loading your original low res, and here you can uh, resize to a higher resolution. Uh, the benefit is you can play with the denoising, right? Uh, if you want to make it really close to the original one, make a lower value. But if you want to make uh, the new image has more creativity, so you're bouncing up this value. And here I can, you know, change the value here. Um, but I find this is a little bit uh, slow, um, especially when you do the refiners. Uh, this will increase the time dramatically. Uh, so usually I will do is just using advantage, uh, the default extras. In extras, uh, I do have upscale one and two. In upscale, you have a bunch of algorithm you can choose. Um, by default, I think the lensos is pretty good if you want to get a very soft edged image. I use uh, Swing IR 4X. This one intend to give you a little bit more like a line work, so the edges could be uh, sharper uh, than the others. Uh, if you want to dive into a whole uh, range of you know pros and cons, the definition of this upscale algorithm, I have a link later I will uh, post here. They talk about different um, upscalers, uh, what's the best choice, um, compare their performance, uh, the speed, I will I will keep the link right here, okay, in, in our tutorial. I don't want to dive too detail into the technical stuff. Okay, so um, so I will do upscale, okay? So I'm just using the S, uh, SWAN IR 4X, and I will bring this, um, you know, already, um, uh, you know, um, blurred the edge, right? I'll just bring it here. So right now this uh, resolution is 1600. Uh, so I'm gonna do uh, upscale by two, and um, everything is default. Uh, I do wanna actually split oversized image. Uh, this basically means uh, it will tie out the image into small sections. Um, so you have a multi-core GPU can be computed very fast. Um, however, it could you know causing some side effects, but it, it usually it works pretty well because you do have overlapping across the edges. All right, so I will do uh, two, upscale two. Um, I usually want to do it step by step. I don't want to do just bouncing up directly to four. Um, so I will do two first, just see how fast uh, this will be. Um, because I'm using my server, um, this is relatively fast um, compared to um, my laptop, uh, but still this will take a little bit time. So let's wait. We'll pause the recording. Okay, so after about um, 30 seconds, uh, this one's done. So I have this new image. If I click, um, and just save the image so you can see the difference. Oh, oh, 13. So let's take a look. Right, so this is oh, 13. If I roll over, you can see this image resolution is a 32 by 1600. Right, so it's larger. Uh, if I bring that into this viewer, right, you do have a little bit sharper image. Um, it looks like a Gaudi sword. Pretty cool. Right. Um, the nice thing about it is uh, the left and the right edge right now is not very readable uh, because you know we did a little bit work in Photoshop, but you know here you can you can still bring the image into Photoshop and fill the uh, fill the region, fill the selected uh, region that will blur it out. But it's not too bad. Okay, uh, so I will do one more time uh, to upscale, uh, double the size one more time. So this time I'm going to drag this in, right? And then I will run this one more time uh, using exactly the same upscaler. Okay, it will, this will take a longer time. I will pause the video. Okay, so this after about um, 
one minute, uh, I got this higher resolution uh, upscaler done. So if I zoom in, you'll see a much larger uh, image. So save it, 014, uh, cool, uh, so that is done. So now if I <clears throat> take a look at this 014, so that's a 6400 pixel, that's much higher. So if I bring that into, you know, this is the current one, 32, if I bring the 64, <clears throat> yeah, you see the, uh, the image is very sharp, okay, uh, much better quality. All right, so that's pretty much about how you upscale an image. Uh, here I want to show you a few uh, examples I made earlier, just to show you the result of different um, uh, images. Uh, so I did a bunch of um, 360 panorama image. Oh, I forgot to mention is whenever you do the text prompt, use Laura. Uh, make sure you mention this. I did the double bracket just to emphasize. This is called uh, eco rectangular projection. Uh, basically, it's a projection mapping. Guarantee you have this panorama 360 style. Uh, so this is super important. Make sure you mention that. And also, uh, at some point, you want to mention um, the, in the negative is the left side does not continue into the right side. Uh, I find this really give stable diffusion a better uh, kind of command. Uh, they have to match, right, to flow the pixels from right edge or left edge into right. Um, so that is something you wanna uh, you wanna emphasize. Uh, also, I mentioned this in the positive uh, text. So this is my trick uh, to make sure this is working. Um, all right, so now let me just load in a few other examples uh, of upscaler I made earlier. Uh, so this is one, uh, let me show you this one first. Yeah, so this is one I made with the other upscaler. This one gave you a very soft result. Um, let me see which one I used. I believe I actually used uh, probably the Lanzos. Uh, probably I used this one. This one doesn't give you the sharp edge. Uh, so as a result, you get this more like a soft edges. Uh, but it, in some situations, this would be a, a preferred, uh, desired uh, style. Okay, so it's up to you. So this is one. Um, I will show you another one I did. Um, so this is the, uh, let me see, I have a bunch of them. Yeah, I just want to make sure I find the correct one. Yeah, this one has a little bit sharper edges, uh, so you can see the dark lines, right? Uh, it's a little bit like a drawing or painting, uh, but again, it's pretty sharp. And this version, I actually use Photoshop to blur the edges. I think the edges was here, so I blur the edge. Uh, you can also do it manually uh, in Photoshop if you have good skills, right? To you know, do the smart uh, to do the smart feel, uh, you can blur the edge. Um, and here is uh, another version here. Golf. Actually, this is my, uh, yeah, this one is a different one. Okay, they also have this kind of very drawing-like sharp edges. Okay, I, I believe the edge was here and I blurred. Um, again, as a you know conclusion, you can blur that in Photoshop directly by offset uh, the pixels, right? I just mentioned, just one more time. You can offset the pixels, then you blur the edge. Uh, or another way is after you blur the edge, uh, you offset the image, just transfer the image back to stable diffusion. Then you can let stable diffusion to compute again uh, using exactly the same resolution. Uh, so that basically will kind of uh, merge uh, the edges uh, pretty easily. Okay, I hope this tutorial will be useful uh, for upscale uh, as well as uh, the 360 LoRa. Oh, one more thing about the um, travel uh, text uh, text uh, prompt travel. 
Uh, it's actually a pretty cool um, technique. I will show you really quick. You can basically produce any um, between two, three, or dozen of text prompt. You can create a morphing among this text prompt. Uh, so you can have this kind of like a looping animation across multiple text prompt. Uh, the way you can do it is in a script. You can load uh, this called uh, prompt travel. Uh, this is the script. Once you're loading that, then you have you know certain controls. You can pretty much keep as a default. And then here, you know, you can use enter, and then have the next text prompt. Enter again, have the next te text prompt. So when you render, it will render multiple. Uh, based on the enter key, right, you put it. Uh, so that is one way uh, you can do the travel, um, text uh, prompt travel, okay. I will disable this because I don't want to do it right now. Um, the way I did installation, um, you guys could actually just search um, online. Uh, this is called uh, text prompt travel. Um, I think I already installed uh, probably here. Yeah, but anyway, uh, it's already being installed in, in this engine. Uh, but if you want to search how to install this, you can go to um, basically uh, available, then you can load from the server, uh, then you can search the one you want to you want to install. Okay, and there's a lot of extensions here. Uh, just, you know, uh, search online, you can find the one you want. Okay, so, but anyway, the one I did is called prompt travel, which is already installed right here in the script. Okay, prompt travel. All right, I think that's it for today's uh, super quick updates on generative AI using stable diffusion with Panorama. 360 LoRa as well as uh, Upscaler, a little bit about the uh, you know prompt travel, uh, which is really cool effects. You can create animations. Uh, here's another one. Right, it's morphing from one to another. Now uh, this will take a long time, so just be cautious. Um, it's very intense in terms of the computing time. Um, in this case, I think the one I had probably take the whole night uh, render this out. Uh, so you do want to make sure not you know uh, drag down the whole performance of the server. All right, that's it.